So that's what 15 gallons a minute looks like going into a water trough. That's a thousand gallon trough there. And this is another one here. You can see there's a float down there. The float gets to the top, it shuts the pump off. In the summertime, we'll run a siphon hose between these two to kind of keep the level up so it's always high and it kind of self feeds back and forth. But in wintertime, on cold days, the hose just freezes, so we don't do that in the wintertime unless it's going to be about freezing. Hey everybody, welcome to Glen and Nuts Cow Emporium. Today I said I was going to talk to you about water, so I have a few notes here that I might refer to. I'm going to try not to get too uh, full of statistics and numbers and stuff. Um, basically, when you're on the farm, if you're on an acreage farm, you are responsible for your own uh, water and your own sewer. So. I grew up in town, uh, I knew how the process worked for farms, also my parents had a cabin when I was younger uh, down in Montana, so we used spring water and an outhouse, familiar with all of that. Um, by the way, that was my favorite. <laughs> uh, so Glenn and I used to, um, well, we built a new house, quite a Few years ago now we argue about when it was but I think it was 2008 and um, before that we had a house where we shared a well with his parents and I believe it was about two and a half gallons of water per minute from that uh, well that we shared so two households were run with that uh, they were pretty much empty nesters at that point um, but we had uh, two adults and two children, and our herd of cattle. So I'm not really sure how we managed it uh, back then because uh, that's a lot of water. I can remember um, water shortages quite often. So we'd have to be like mindful of when the other person was, the other household was like bathing or something because we needed to do laundry. We needed to water cattle, especially if it was in the winter time. And um, we don't, basically don't use well water here to like water our gardens and stuff. We try to use uh, surface water for that. And by surface water, I mean like dugout water, slough water, uh, rain water that we've collected into barrels and such. So um, since we built our new house, we have, we have our well exclusively that we use on our own. And it's still only 2.5 gallons of water per minute. So what happens is we, uh, the well was already there uh, previously to us building the house. So we tapped into that well, brought it into um, to use for our household and we still use it for the cattle. <laughs> and the dog's completely bored with me talking about water. So, sorry Zip. <laughs> so, so when we have a problem with our well and the well pump uh, wiring is the coolest thing I ever, have ever seen. I call it smarty wiring because it's also very colorful. Um, we've had to replace the well pump before, which is, I don't know, about 400 to $500. And Glenn's able, was able to do that kind of work. Um, we the water comes from the well into our house um, you'll see that i've taken a picture of the pressure tank so because our uh, water comes out basically so slowly there's so little water it needs to go into a pressure tank first the pressure tank then uh, fills up and supplies the house with uh, water that it needs and as the water is used out of it it fills up um, otherwise we wouldn't have a very good system for, <laughs> we would have a different life because the water would trickle in. Um, so once it comes into the pressure tank, 
Then we, of course we have outside taps on the house, but like we don't really use them for watering. So we, the water, we also have a filter system because our water is uh, full of sand and silt and stuff in this well. The water's delicious though. Guys, if you have ever tasted like fresh, like well water that uh, doesn't have a lot of sulfur or uh, salt or those kinds of things in it, man, our water's delicious. But it is sandy, so we filter it. But if we are using it to fill the water troughs outside uh, from the hydrant, then we don't filter it. It just comes in the house, goes through the pressure tank, and then back outside to the water trough. I know it all kind of sounds a little boring, but that's how it works. The well is away from the house. Pressure tank's in the basement. Um, the water that goes into our taps and the washing machine, dishwasher, toilets are, is all filtered uh, to keep that buildup of sand and silt and stuff from wrecking our appliances and stuff because that's definite uh, concern. So, um, we figured, well, we looked, we looked it up, you know, on average, it says that people use about 60 gallons of water per person per day. I could see that, especially when you're talking about um, flushing the toilet. One, about one third of the water that's used in homes is, is uh, from flushing toilets, which kind of seems crazy when you think about it. Um, so, and cattle, we, our cattle, are about 1,300 to 1,400 pounds, and they drink about 15 gallons of water per day. And unless they're lactating and or it's hot out, and then they will drink up to 20, 25 gallons of water a day. So when you think, and compared to a person using 60 gallons of water a day for just basically drinking, bathing, flushing, <laughs> I don't know, it makes me feel kind of bad. But, uh, so I, I, I find those uh, numbers kind of interesting. About 15 years ago, the government um, surveyed uh, landowners, farm agricultural people to, to register their water sources and what they were using for water, how many people lived there, how many animals they had, uh, different places that they watered from. And I think that included the dugouts and um, major sloughs. So uh, that is one way that the government keeps track of who's using the water and where. So Glenn showed you uh, in the video of filling up those um, big thousand gallon uh, tanks. Our cows will drink about two of those per day. The uh, white water tank on the wagon is 500 gallons. So we're just talking about how much water looks like what. Um, 50 gallons would be a black oil drum, say like they, we use for burning barrels, if we have burning barrels. Glenn and I don't use burning barrels, we take our garbage to town. And five gallons is typically a bucket that we would use around the farm. Or <laughs> if you are a winemaker or familiar with that, a five gallon bucket is roughly the size of a carboy that you would make wine in, rough, about 23 liters or something like that. So not all our water comes from the well. I mentioned um, some of it comes from service water that runs into dugouts and sloughs. So we will pump water from there because obviously we don't have a lot of water up at the properties, the houses. Um, in the first video down east, Glenn showed the 15 gallon minute well. We are not tapped into that sucker up here, so uh, it's Trickle City up here. So of course sometimes uh, surface water, we can have trouble with the surface water because if it comes in the form of snow runoff, well it's immediate, it basically uh, it's been accumulating over the winter and then melts all of a sudden, so it starts running through the property. I'm hoping in the springtime to get some pictures of that. But if it runs um, through properties that 
where they've spread manure or something else has been put on the surface uh, in the fall. Uh, the water will run through that. Sometimes it can be nasty, guys, just nasty. Anyway, if you want more information about um, how much water it takes to raise cattle, the Beef Cattle Research Council provides very detailed information if you're interested in looking that further. So I'm going to leave you with uh, one more thing about, well, two more things. <laughs> um, so we have to deal with the water waste from our house that goes out. And uh, so we're also responsible not just for finding our water and bringing it into our property. And then, of course, the well runs on electricity. But we're also responsible for our wastewater. And so when we built this property, our basement is really deep because we wanted a 10 foot basement. So our house is a little higher, but our basement's really deep. And so um, the, we chose to put in, we're recommended to put in a, a concrete um, septic tank. And so because our basement is so low and we have a toilet downstairs, um, it, we needed to in, install like a pump system in, just to bring that stuff up into the sewer tank uh, outside. And y'all, that thing, that sewer tank, cost us twenty thousand dollars so that's a lot of if you live in a town or a city and they're charging you fees that's a lot of months for the fees right there twenty thousand dollars and like it's a thing we have to maintain like the there's a filter in there that needs cleaned out um there's like it needs to be pumped out once a year by the septic tank guy uh anyway um, and when you have a septic tank system, you also need a field. So the solids stay in the tank, and when the uh, side of the liquids, because they separate, when the liquids fill up, then the pump, a pump in the bottom of the tank pumps up the liquids out into a field, and then the water sort of drips down back into the soil on that field. So you can't... Uh, really put anything on top of that field because if it was a tree or something heavy it would not be good for that it might wreck your field because the field is probably an extra five thousand bucks men you can pay a lot of town fees for that kind of money and if there's a problem that is not on your property because of your property they'll come and fix it for you they'll come and make sure that you got water and that your sewer is taken care of okay there are some perks to being in town anyway Oh, one more thing. So, a little saying that my husband reminded me that he'd heard one time was that whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting over. But we're not fighting over water today, but yeah, this whiskey. Cheers, y'all.